C2. She became the first woman to be invited to play as a professional in an event of this nature and has fully justified the faith shown in her by her partner Phil Nagy. Her progress to the final table has made her the number one trending player in the world of poker and with a documentary crew following her every move, the story is just beginning. From Austin, Texas, and with a chip stack of 3.425 million, welcome to the table, Ebony Kenny. just finished my jam-packed summer of the World Series of Poker, and I was on my way to Joshua Tree to decompress and get some solo time. And my boss, the CEO of ACR, called me and said, hey, I've got something for you. And lets me know that, hey, there's a $200,000 invite only uh, tournament, and I'm going, and I'm gonna take you, you're my pro. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? What do you mean? He told me, he said, I'm sorry to tell you, you weren't first on my list. You were like fifth. I go, the fact that I'm even on this list is insane to me. I don't care if I was a hundredth. <laughs> like... So originally, when Phil called me to play uh, the Coin River Invitational, that was the only event I was going to play. And then a week before I was scheduled to leave, he called me and let me know that not only am I going to play that, but I get to play the entire Triton schedule, which is a bunch of high roller events ranging from $25,000 buy-in to $100,000 buy-in. So I got to play everything. <laughs> oh, my vibrator's on. <laughs> oh. As we're preparing to leave, the energy is kind of insane um, because not only do I get to go, but I get to bring both of my kids and my best friend. Hi. 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 Cut the hair. Oh, Look at this hair. Oh my god. And it was just kind of surreal because my kids and I had just been through so much in the past several years, and it was exciting for us to be able to go and and have a first class trip together at a time where we could thoroughly enjoy it. It felt surreal for the most part. Where are we going? <sighs> Cyprus. Oh my God! The fuck? Yeah. Yes. Okay. He said that we can make small bags about it. Sponsor me already, you fucks. Jeez. I'm just ready to get sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Element, stay salty, my friends. <laughs> Even just hearing that, being staked for over $500,000 worth of tournaments is insane. I've been playing poker for so long and the biggest buy-in before this trip that I had ever played was a $10,000 buy-in. So when you put that in perspective, it is incredibly different than anything that I've experienced my entire poker career. The entire journey going there was pretty surreal because my kids and I and Camille, we got to fly first class there. I'm 
friend. <laughs> Here too. Our first flight was from Austin to London and we landed on time. For whatever reason, we missed our connecting flight. Like they had decided we couldn't get on. Like we couldn't go through security to get on. Uh, but because we were flying in first class, we got to stay in the, the lounge. And so there was, you know, snacks and food and couches for us to sleep on. And everybody slept except for my daughter. She was doing schoolwork and she is like the most responsible human I know. And it's, I don't know where she got it from. <laughs> so instead of landing at 6.30 p.m., we landed at 2.30 a.m., which was pretty terrible. <laughs> All of us here at British Airways and the One World Alliance, we'd like to welcome home our customers who live here in Cyprus, which those of you visiting an enjoyable stay. If you're traveling further afield this morning, we do wish you a very pleasant and safe onward journey. From all of the crew on board, it's been our pleasure looking after you on our flight tonight from London. We've certainly enjoyed your company and we do look forward to seeing you again very soon. It was in Cyprus on the Turkish side of the island. So not Cyprus, Texas. Apparently that's a place. Well, I wait to you, whiskey lunch. Oh, thank you, Susan. You're welcome. You're welcome. It matches my nails. <laughs> All right, let me. I want to see my room. I want to see my room. Way shower. Oh my God, you're I don't think that the oh, outlets great. are the same. We get a balcony, dude. We have a balcony. Oh my God, that cool. Stop. Holy fuck! <laughs> this is insane. I can't wait till it's light outside so I can actually see everything. Nice to meet you, yeah. What's up? Hi, hi. 10K. 10K is, I can, I'm like comfortable, I get hyped about it, but I don't get a service anymore. Um, but I, I do get to play the 25K and 30K and 50K next week, so it's like a warm up. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. Oh, I didn't realize you'd be online. Yeah. I think I'm just about to call off half of that. Give me just a second here. Cyprus was actually the first time I met Phil in person. I'm like, oh, hey, person who is putting me in $500,000 worth of tournaments, high five. Like, what can you even say, you know? <laughs> Amazing. Good to meet you. So, Hello. Hi, how, are you? how are you? What's up, Phil? So when somebody's taking their time, I just pull out my frog. <laughs> that is going to tilt somebody's face off. For sure. <laughs> Phil is who Phil is, and it's just, it's so wonderful that he, you know, gave me this experience, and then on top of that, allowed me to be surrounded in love, you know, with my, in the form of my people, you know, so I'm very grateful. And, and I'm absolutely, I'm absolutely gonna tell Bryn, no licking my frog. <laughs> anyway, Rob's out there waiting for you. Go eat okay, something, okay. enjoy yourself. It was a pie waiting, Phil. Yeah. So Rob Young, who was the, the creator of the Coin Ribbit Invitational got me and my family into this restaurant and we didn't know that it, we didn't have to pay for it. 
And we ordered oh, so much food and I'm waiting for the bill afterwards. And we're like, no, they're just like, no, just go. And I'm like, what? Just being able to have this experience and me look around the table and just see like pieces of my heart around right before I'm about to play all of these high rollers. It was just such an incredible experience. Oh, this is Camille here with me. I got incredibly lucky with my poker coach uh, by way of Chance Corneth from Chip Leader Coaching. And I started working with him just a few weeks before I left for Triton. Yeah, because a lot of people, it's like being afraid to pull the trigger on a big bluff or being afraid to like call a river show them look stupid or like something like that. Those are very similar to what I'm afraid of. <laughs> I am not a GTO player, as the cool kids call it. And Chance was just an incredible match for me because he helped me work on my strengths and like helped me gain a lot of confidence in that and then gave me so much information that ended up becoming so valuable by way of live reads and just kind of patterns and tells and it was just really incredible and I am so fucking grateful for him. <laughs> What the fuck? All these notes. Let's have a, a twerk off at the Triton. Get all the With players, the players twerk. twerk. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to ask. So when he's twerking, like he's twerking, he's shaking his ass. Then he's like, he's moving, he's like, yeah, he's moving. Like, he's twerking and moving his ass. I get to start off my Triton trip by playing a Merit Poker Party 5K main event tournament, which is my wheelhouse. This is my comfort zone. It's a $5,000 buy-in. I'm like, okay, girl, let's do this. It was a nice warm up get there, kind of like getting my feet wet. I almost doubled up almost immediately when I sat down to play, so it was great. It was a short day because I late regged and only played a few hours. I think I might have played like four or five hours and I think the day itself was probably like an eight or nine hour day. So it was pretty short for me. I put chips in the bag, I twerked, I was very happy, and it was a nice way to start the trip. <laughs> it feels nice to have this little momentum going into what is going to be the craziest week of my life. This was my first time playing poker in Cyprus, obviously. I couldn't believe the poker scene there. I saw people that I knew from the States who I didn't even know traveled to Europe to play poker. I start day two of the MPP main event and end up getting pretty unlucky in a few different spots and then I get it in pretty short. And after I bust, I look up and see that late registration is still open, which is completely unheard of in poker, by the way. Normally on day two, late reg, if there's late reg into day two, it stops as soon as day two starts. And this tournament was completely different. Registration was still open, like I wanna say like two hours into day two. And so I realized, hey, I could still buy in. And I still had, I think it was like 25 or 30 big blinds. So I rebought and uh, actually ran that stack up pretty well. And it was, it was nice for a little bit. <laughs> I was called aggressive by a gentleman 
I'm using that term very loosely here. The dealer had announced the action a few times and he had on headphones in both ears and he kept asking what was the action, what was the action? And he was being rude to the table, refusing to give change, rude to the dealer. And absolutely every time the action was on him, he'd be like, how much, what was it? Even when it was announced. So there was a hand that he and I got involved in. There was a raise announced and he said that he didn't hear. And I was like, the dealer said it three times. She said, she said it. Yeah. And he kind of got, I forgot what he said, but very dismissive. Yeah, if, if you can't hear, you should take off your headphones. Because she said it three times, and it slows down the game. Yeah, I'm aggressive. <laughs> he said that I was an aggressive American. I said, I sure am. <laughs> and... He was sitting at the seat next to the dealer and the dealer was a woman and it was so fantastic because the whole table had had enough of his shit basically. And so when um, the dealer had said, it's your big blind, I need your auntie and he didn't hear. And so she moved his headphone and said, big blind and Annie please. And she made a comment about being an aggressive dealer. <laughs> So the whole table was laughing. <laughs> but it was so fantastic because it was just, it was so fitting. I don't allow myself to get caught up in what other people's idea of me is. I just have to remember who I am and really focus and use, you know, the mental muscles that I've been able to grow and try to play my best and not let anyone take me out of that because I know that when I think about moments that I've not been proud of myself on the poker table or I've lashed out or I have stepped away from who I am inherently as a person it is because my mental game has been like I kind of let weakness play a part and it doesn't mean that I'm not affected by things, right? I am human, uh, but just knowing that it's okay. I get to, I get to be human here. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you, see you tomorrow. Yeah, busting a tournament is never fun because you walk away from a tournament and you're just like kind of looking back and longing and wishing you were still in. And I busted before I made the money, so it makes it even worse. I know that me kind of sitting in this like, oh, poor me, or oh, I'm sad, is not really gonna help my mindset or my ability to perform in the coming days, which are really the most important days of my life thus far in my career. We're going on a boat, we're going on a boat. Food and fruit, a sunbed and music. kids and I have been through so much. Five years ago, my son died three times. My daughter saved his life. He was in a coma and the doctors were like, he's not going to make it. And so he had 17 surgeries and we were just not sure what our family life was going to be like. So there was no version of me then that imagined my life would be like this now. So I am so grateful and being on the boat and having this time with my kids and my best friend is just such a gift. It's way bigger than this tournament for me, you know? It is being able to have this experience with my kids. That is a memory that's just cemented into my heart and I will forever take with me. I'm so grateful to feel like I told him and I, and I keep telling him that this is way deeper than just a person who gets this experience. It's, you know, it's life. <laughs>